If I were to ask you, what are the best NBA teams right now, what would you say? Most fans will quickly point to teams like the Warriors, the Nets, or even the Bulls. But there is one team that's not getting nearly the attention they deserve, and that's the Washington Wizards. After a disappointing season last year, the Wizards have bounced back to new heights with some exciting new pieces and a revitalized squad. The Wizards are ready to prove themselves as one of the top teams in a competitive Eastern Conference. Without further ado, let's take a look at the Wizards' terrific start to their season and why they are one of the most slept-on teams this year. As of December 1, 2021, the Wizards have played a total of 21 games with a record of 14 wins and 8 losses. This currently places them second in the East, and it ties them with the defending NBA champions, the Milwaukee Bucks. To put into perspective just how good their season has been so far, they have more than doubled their wins while halving their losses, compared to last year where they tallied just 6 wins and 16 losses in the same amount of games. And yet, despite this incredible improvement, nobody seems to be talking about them. If we're going to analyze how the Wizards made this leap, we first have to talk about how they arrived at this situation. This team had very little success as their star player, John Wall, has been riddled with injuries over the years. It's like this man couldn't catch a break. Starting in 2012, Wall missed a total of 33 games due to a stress injury in his left knee leading to the Wizards having a horrendous record of 5 wins to 28 losses over that stretch. By 2018, he had already gone through multiple surgeries involving both his knees. This same year, he had a season-ending injury where he had to get surgery from a pain in his left heel. Seven years later, Wall was still plagued with injuries as he tore his Achilles in January of 2019. This sparked a new future for both the Wizards and John Wall. In an attempt to save the team, they trade a wall and a first-round pick to the Rockets in exchange for the triple-double machine himself, Russell Westbrook. Westbrook at the time wasn't a good fit with James Harden, and so this move made sense for both teams to propel themselves into rebuilding mode. While some fans doubted if the westbrook Beal duo would work, a number of people were hopeful because the Wizards were already a playoff team with two star guards as their main duo during Wall's tenure. Unsurprisingly, this didn't quite work out the way they planned. They had a terrible season, winning just 18 out of their first 50 games. Despite this, they managed to make a push for the eighth seed of the playoffs, but were quickly knocked out in the first round by the Sixers. Although they managed to make it to the playoffs, the picture was clear. The duo of Beal and Westbrook would not catapult the Wizards into a successful future. Luckily for them, on the other side of the league, the Lakers were having a turmoil of their own. They decided to shake up their roster after losing to the Suns in the first round. In a massive trade with the Wizards, the Lakers acquired Westbrook along with two second-round picks in exchange for Kyle Kuzma, Kentavious Caldwell-Pope, Montrez Harrell, and the 22nd pick in the NBA draft. On paper, this looked like a tanking season for the Wizards that were heading into rebuilding mode. A lot of people expected them to drop near the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings. After all, what would Bradley Beal and a bunch of role players do in a conference filled with super teams and other all-star duos? Apparently, a lot. The Wizards are surpassing all expectations and have dramatically improved and it all starts with getting rid of Westbrook. Before going to the Lakers, Westbrook finished the season averaging another triple-double with 22.2 points, 11.7 assists, and 11.5 rebounds. A lot of people criticize Westbrook for stat padding and being bad by not helping his team, but these aren't the stats of a bad player. He's definitely good and a legitimate superstar, but the problem was obvious he wasn't a good fit with Beal, and to an extent, with the team itself. You see, there are different kind of superstars. There are stars who function primarily as floor generals like CP3. Then, there are sharpshooters like Klay Thompson. Others, like Giannis, thrive by attacking the rim. Regardless of the talent, superstar players either flourish or diminish depending on the role given to them. In the case of Beal and Westbrook, they both play their best as the center of their team's offense with the ball in their hands. Putting two ball-dominant guards next to each other is not a recipe for success. This doesn't mean that they can't put up great numbers while playing together. It also doesn't mean that they can't lead their teams to wins. They certainly can, and they certainly did. Beal and Westbrook are both phenomenal players, but their talents can never be fully unleashed while playing side by side. A team does not become successful by adding as many stars as possible. A team becomes successful when they add pieces that fit well with each other. And this is exactly what we're witnessing with the Wizards today. 
Beal is the only all-star on the team, but the Wizards are thriving because the pieces surrounding him fit well with his play style. Beal's scoring average is lower this season at 22.7 points per game, compared to last season's 31.3 points per game, but it's clearly resulting in more wins for his team. Bradley Beal is not the only one elevating this team. The supporting pieces around him also have played a major role in getting them this scorching start to their season. For example, let's take a look at their two big men in Montrez Harrell and Daniel Gafford. Harrell currently has the sixth highest usage rate as a center in the entire league. His proven ability to score in the paint while being an excellent pick and roll player has been invaluable for the Wizards. He sits firmly as the second highest scorer on the Wizards at 16.6 .6 points per game, being behind only Bradley Beal himself. Together with Gafford, the Wizards are currently averaging an impressive 52.9 points per game in the paint, placing them third in the league ahead of Phoenix. Another great addition to the team has been Spencer Dinwiddie, who has been averaging a solid 14.1 points and 5.5 assists. He may not be as explosive as Westbrook, but he's exactly the kind of point guard who can build great chemistry with the rest of the team. He's a versatile player who can create shots for both his teammates and himself. Kuzma and KCP also add to the Wizards' flexibility on both offense and defense as they both play heavy minutes. Previously on the Lakers, they rarely got to shine because there were brighter stars than LeBron and AD, resulting in them often not getting the usage that they needed. In a market like Washington, both Kuzma and KCP get to develop into solid role players who can score the ball when needed while taking pressure off of Beal. The Wizards' rookie head coach, Wes Unsell Jr., also deserves credit for dramatically increasing the team's defensive capabilities. According to B-Ball Index Metrics, KCP currently ranks 11th in difficulty metric among 38 wing stoppers who have played 250 or more minutes this season and 23rd out of 265 players overall. Kuzma sits at a comfortable 67th place on the same list while also being within the 91st percentile for his defensive role versatility, which comes from guarding different forwards. Lastly, let's not forget the intangible that often gets missed in the stat sheet, which is that they look much more comfortable with their roles despite being new to this team. With all this said, why are the Wizards not getting the attention they deserve? Well, it's simple. The NBA is a star-driven league that often focuses on big market teams with superstars regardless of how their team might be performing. Just take the Lakers as an example. Despite their poor performance so far this season, the media still chooses to cover them because of the stars they have in LeBron, AD, and Westbrook. Bradley Beal is a legitimate star, and he has proven that he can play on the same level as the league's biggest names. The Wizards so far have had one of the most interesting comeback journeys, and they deserve just as much attention as all the other NBA teams, such as the Bucks and Warriors. The Wizards have once again built themselves up after a series of misfortunes and struggles from the past few years. They are proving that a team with a single all-star can still shine and win without needing to form a super team. It's only going to get better from here if they continue to head in the right direction. Here's to hoping we see more surprises from this team, not just this season, but in the seasons to come.